Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks. In today we are going to create a tier list for all the power points from the spellbook of every single faction in Battle for Middle-earth 2, The Rise of the Witch King. Let's get it started. S is going to be the best and D- is going to be the worst, of course. And we're gonna start with the Army of the Dead, which is a 25 power point spell from the Men of the West faction. And it's not the best, but also not the worst. The reason why I don't like this one is just because it's so easy to be killed and it's so easy to be dodged, you know? And when you watch like Battle for Middle Earth 1 and there is the Army of the Dead Summon, which is game winning, this one is not nearly as much impact as the one from Battle for Middle Earth 1, let me tell you that much. But it's still great. The reason why it's not bad is because when you use that, you will be able to kill enemy heroes when they are immobile or enemy units. And the second you do that, you will even get more and more power points collected. And when it comes to kill an army, it's just one of the best power points in the game. But again, it's not the best. And for that reason, I'm going to place it in the E+, while S is the best. Arrow Volley. Arrow Volley is like a 10 power point summon from multiple factions, but it's not the best thing in the world. It's only effective if you have like Pialvin, for example, from the Engma faction, or if you have like a Horn of Gondor from Boromir, the Clawbreak from Elves basically to stop enemy units from moving away from it because arrow volley has like an animation time and your opponent if he's a good player or if he's just paying attention he will be able to see the animation time the animation incoming and he has more than enough time to move aside and you will hit nothing with your arrow volley it costs you 10 power points you know but when it hits it's hitting like a truck again the point is about hitting it you know what i'm saying and for that reason since it's like very situational, it might be OP in some situations, but not very strong in many situations. I'm going to place it in the C+. Avalanche coming up next. This is a 25 power point summon from the Ingmar faction. It's not bad. It's good against units, but more effective against buildings. It's not the best 25 power points by far, but it can always hit, you know. And for that reason, I'm going to place it actually in the A+ li uh, list next to Army of the Dead. And Balrog Summon coming up next. Balrog Summon is a 25 power point summon from the Goblin faction or from the Mordor faction. Yeah, what can I say about that? It's kind of squishy. I mean, it dies in seconds against Flat. It dies in seconds against Silverton Arrow. So it's like really, really bad against Elves in long game. And it can be just taken down in no time. And the damage from the normal auto attacks are not hurting that much. The Breath Fire is also not the strongest ability in the game and for that reason i'm a bit disappointed in you balrog but i'm gonna place you my friend sorry for that in the b plans and the next one is gonna be barrage barrage is actually pretty nice in my opinion it hits very hard uh, against enemy units and buildings the ideal situation for you to use barrage is when you attack him you know and he's kind of trying to defend himself and then you get the chance to hit barrage on the enemy structures and units at the same time to make the maximum value of this 15 power point spell and yeah it's pretty effective i like that and for that reason i'm gonna place it definitely in the say it's uh, a plus plus it's one of the best 15 power points in my opinion and next one on the list is barricade barricade is a 10 power point summon from the mordor faction it's like a defensive tower defensive structure to protect you but it's nothing too crazy. It can be taken down in, you know, in late game. It's a good thing for early mid game, but in late game, it's just holding off big time. But on the other side, it has like a low cooldown. You can use it multiple times to get yourself a bit more, you know, a safe place. And for that reason, since it's, since it's only 10 power points from the Spellbook of Mortal, I'm going to place it definitely in the C+. Cave Pads, definitely S. Cave Pads is able to nullify enemy leadership bonuses and also make them weaker. All you gotta do is place it on top of the enemy units and you can move it around, which also means you can use it for scouting purposes. And you need to be careful with that because it can be killed. So ideally you wanna start the fight and use it afterwards. This way the enemy archers are not gonna be able to target that, you know? Very important. Blight. Blight is also a 15 power point summon from the Ingmar faction. Uh, it's pretty nice if you can combine it with something like Felvind in which you can, you know, group all the enemy units together, disable them, which is like a tainted land kind of thing. It deals damage, it poisons them. And if they die, they will be turning into whites and you will get the chance to control these whites. So it's very situational, but Engma has many, many multi, you know, like one more combo potential you can use, for example, Felvin, Blight, or the Frozen Land to slow them down and Blight again. So it can be pretty nice, not only to kill enemy units, but also to get yourself a huge army of whites. 
but I'm assuming it's not as good as the Barrage. And for that reason, I'm going to place it also in the B+. Plus. Summon Citadel. Uh, it has to be the worst 25 power point from any spellbook from Dwarves. It's just not very good. Uh, it can be good in some situations, but in most situations, every other thing is just much, much better. It can, you know, use the launch, the mighty catapult thing. But if you don't buy the store, uh, Numenorian Stormworker or something like that on it, it's very squishy and it can be taken down, especially in late game, you know, when you get the chance to use a 25 power point summon, then your opponent has potentially an army to be able to take it down. And for that reason, it has not nearly as much of a destruction power as like, for example, Balrog or army after that. And for that reason, sorry, my friends, but you will be in the B. Uh, Cloudbreak coming up next. Cloudbreak is an ability which can stun every unit when they have no fear resistant or when the units are not level 5. So the, basically, every unit in BFME to the Rise of the Witch King will get fear resistant once they hit level 5. Or they have heroes like, for example, King Dean with the Stubborn Pride or, you know, Gothmog from Mortal with level 5 uh, or Statue or the Elven Wood, from, Elven Wood from the Elven Faction. There are some spells or heroes they will you know grant you fear resistant and that's gonna shut down the effect of cloud break completely but until this is gonna happen it's pretty nice to stop the enemy units from moving away which can make it quite easy for you to take them down with something like arrow valley for example but it's a 15 power point and in my opinion not as good as the barrage and for that reason i'm gonna place it in the b plus the next one on the list is creepin pretty much the isengard version of the cave pads from the goblins very OP, super strong, costs you only 5 power points, everybody should be using that. It's just gonna make your army so much more stronger, while the enemy army is gonna be so much more weaker. Darkness. Uh, darkness is a spell. Darkness is a spell, which means it's gonna work always on buffs, spells, or leadership. So it can make your army quite strong for, from the Goblin Faction, for example. And remember, in Rise of the Witch King, the buffing system is a bit different. You can have only one buff and one leadership available at the same time but the spells they always do stack with each other which doesn't mean that you can use darkness twice in a 2v2 match or something like that that's not gonna work out this way but you can use war chant eye of sauron for example and then you have like uh, the horde bonus from the orcs plus you have the darkness this is able to stack with each other to make your army as strong as they can potentially become but i would say in long terms it's not nearly as effective as the cloud break because cloud break is gonna stun them and stun is like 99% of the time better. Devastation, definitely an S. Devastation gives you instantly money, which is like a huge part of the Isengard gameplay in 2021. It can give you such a great boost of money and that instantly, which can, you know, help you out to get more units on the field or to recruit heroes like Lords, Sharku, or even Saruman can be recruited with the help of Devastation which makes also the Isengard faction to the strongest faction in terms of eco at least. Um, dragon Strike. Dragon Strike is gonna make you target an area in which a dragon comes fly flying by and it's gonna just like spit fire on the ground and deal damage to the units, which is almost impossible to hit, but it's just effective against buildings in this case. Deals great amount of damage to the buildings, but it's also one of the worst 25 power points in my opinion. And for that reason, I'm gonna place it right next to the Balrog. Actually, maybe next to the summon citadel in this case. Summon Dragon uh, from the Isengard or from the Goblin Faction is the best 25 power point in the entire game. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because Summon Dragon, every attack from Summon Dragon, guys, is able to deal as much damage as a Breath Fire from Balrog, which is the ability which has cooldown. While the Dragon's alt attack has no cooldown, you can attack and hit like 5, 6, 8, 10 buildings at the same time and burst them down in a single shot. It's just crazy effective super super strong and the best 25 power points by far in the entire game ranger summon c uh, cost you 15 has no fire arrow it's one of the war summons in the game in my opinion just not efficient and yeah don't waste your power points into that unless you have no other choice eagle summon pretty nice i would say it's the best b plus it's a 15 power point summon from the Elven faction, which will give you the chance to hunt the enemy units, heroes, or the buildings. It deals great amount of damage to the fortress as well. So it's one of the best 15 power point summon for sure. Earthquake from the Man of the West faction or the Dwarven faction, the 25. Uh, pretty nice against buildings. Very similar to the Avalanche, for example. 
it doesn't deal too much damage to the units while avalanche does deal damage to the units for that reason it's a worse than that and we're gonna place it right in front of the balrog elvin wood uh, elvin wood is a 10 power point summon from the elvin faction guys it's gonna give you the same stats like the tainted land which costs only five for the goblins or mortar but on top of that you also get fear resistant which can be good in some matchups and also it's gonna lead you to the end so Remember the three of the power points, it's very important. You need to make a choice early on to get to the point later on. Like, for example, if you want to summon ends, you need to go for this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it's 10 power points. It has lower cooldown, of course, than the Tainted Land from Mordor or Goblins. But it's still 10 power points for Fear Resistant, which can be useful in some situations, but useless in many situations. And for that reason, welcome to the C-Club. End summon, situational. Uh, I believe Eagle Summon is most of the time better, unless you want to use the End Summon to destroy the enemy fortress. If you have a, such a crazy lead or you want to go for a sneaky attack, it's pretty nice. And for that reason, it's going to be in the B, just because I believe that Eagle Summon is just much, much better. Eye of Sauron, 5 power point leadership, active leadership. I like it a lot, it's underrated. I think it's an S one, just because... It gives you the chance to scout. It gives you the it gives you the chance to have like double buff as Mordor, which can be stacking with the Warchant or the Tinted Land. You know, it, it makes it just so effective in my opinion. Then we have the Flood from the Elven faction, 25. It's a great counter ability, by the way. You can use Flood on the Balrog and almost one shot him. If you hit it nicely, you can actually one shot them from 100 to zero. It deals massive damage to the units, massive and crazy damage to the uh, to the buildings too. It's just so great. And for that reason, after the dragon, it's the best 25 power point. And I'm going to also move it to the S. Frozen Land. Frozen Land is a very unique land ability from the Engma faction. Just like the Alvin Wood, it will cause Engma to collect 10 power points to be able to unlock that. But it gives you leadership. And that's the only possible way Engma can get leadership. Now you might say, yeah, but Volda is also leadership. Yeah, true, but only for the Traumaster units. For example, your Rangers or your Black Numenorians, they can't get leadership from uh, Waldor. And Frozen Land is the only way you can get double buff with Engma Faction. And on top of that, it's also able to slow down the enemy units, which makes it easier for you, for example, to land the Blight on them. So it's pretty nice. It's super underrated, but I like it. It's definitely better than the Alvin Wood. And we're going to place it in the C+. Just because it costs you still 10 power points, you know? Fuel the Fires, definitely S. It's a huge boost of resources. You get 70% more money as Isengard from the Lammermere's. The second you have that, build 10 Lammermere's, guys, and you will never, ever run out of resources anymore in the entire game. You can spam, spam, spam all the time. You lose, no problemo. You go just, again, build 5 or 6 Uruk pits, spam units all the time. You will be growing rich. Mountain Giants from Engma, uh, 15 power points, similar to the End Summon from the Elven Faction, but I believe the Mountain Giants are a bit better since they are faster, but they are also more squishy than ants. They die also, for example, against normal arches, while ants, they have like a huge resistance against anything but pikemen or fire. But since they are faster, I'm going to place them actually in the B plus list. That's the summon dragon from the goblin faction. Pretty much the goblin version of the summon dragon from Isengard. Also, of course, S. Then we have the heal. Heal is, yeah. It's a, it's a good faction ability from elves, dwarves, or men of the west, of course. Uh, it's not as effective as in battle for middle or one. Is it's not healing you back to full HP anymore? That's not possible. It can be good in some situations, but I believe every other five power point from any spell book, beside the far side from elves, is just much much better. And for that reason, D. Hobbit summon definitely very great. And we're gonna place it in the A+. Hobbit Summon 10 power point can be actually nice to empower your army with additional great DPS dealing, ha having high DPS units, Hobbits. They're also like great against, actually we're gonna place them in the B+, not in the A. A+. They are good for killing heroes too. Industry, definitely, definitely S. As you can see, we have like all the, you know, money giving abilities in the S, just because I feel like they are busted. They are busted, they give you so much value, you know? Lone Tower Summon is a joke, uh, D minus. Unless you are able to put ranges into that, it's just useless. Don't do that. It's so squishy nowadays, you can kill it in no time. Like one half throw Swartman is able to kill it, and that's gonna cost you 10 power points to unlock that from your spellbook. Same also to the Lone Tower from Dwarves. Mist is great on the other side. 
The reason why Mist is great, it's not only because of the fact that you can nullify enemy leadership bonuses, but also debuff them. No, it's also about your units being stealthed inside the mist. So it's going to be invisible. Your units are going to be invisible for the enemy units. You won't be able to see your units anymore. And it's going to lead you later on to the Eagle Summon, which once again is much, much better than the End Summon in most cases. So for that reason, we're going to place it in the A plus list. Oryx Summon, uh, yeah, situational choice from Engma, for example. It's, you know, good when it comes to use it on the enemy units. So you can, like, for example, have like a scenario in your mind in which you when I get to the back line, like you are playing against Elves, for example, he has like a strong front line with pikemen and Lorian warriors, and he has like a back line with Lorian archers. What you can do is you can summon the orcs on top of the enemy archers. But it's only good when he has no cavalry. When he has cavalry, they're going to get trampled down, one-shotted, and they are just going to be dead. And that's going to invest, you know, be like a waste of 10 power points from you, which you need to be careful about. But it's still, you know, having additional units on the field is always great, and we're going to place them in the B. Palantia, uh, useless in <laughs> Rise of the Witch King, because in Rise of the Witch King, there is no random unrevealed, so you always get to see the faction from your opponent in the loading screen. It will move, it will make you move a bit faster, but to be honest, it's just waste, you know, wasted. But it's needed if you want to get the industry unlocked from the Spellbook of Isengard. So other than that, it's just wasted. Reign of Fire, 25 from Mordor, other, other one than the, uh, than the Balrog Summon, of course. Um, pretty nice. I would say like the darker or the fire version of the avalanche. So they are pretty much having the same destruction power. The freezing rain is like a global debuff from Engmar slash Isengard. It's able to nullify all the leadership bonuses for the entire map from any unit. And also, you know, debuff them on top of that. Make them lose for like a long duration, actually. Three minutes, if I'm not mistaken. 25% damage. Armor will be lost from the enemy units, which means your units are going to be able to deal 25% more damage. And in those big epic fights, it's going to favor you, of course. But I still believe that Cloudbreak is just much better in many situations. And this one is like equally as good or bad as the Darkness. They build um, from men or dwarves situational it's like a passive ability and you know you wanna if you pick that you will just lose five power points just to be able to save some buildings but in lead game it can be nice to you know repair your fortress and this way maybe don't get defeated rallying call 25 <laughs> i mean five power points but it's just the best uh, rallying con and also warten of course we're gonna place them next to each other because they are like equal they make your army deal 50% more damage and become 50% tankier which is always great in any stage of the game you know you have more damage output you are more tanky what else do you want and for all of that for five power points only and it's a buff it can't not it cannot be nullified by the way from the creeping or keef pads so in there is no world in which this is gonna be a bad thing you know for five power points only pick it every single game trust me on that one dwarven riches pretty nice very similar to the industry from uh, Isengard, but it's very underrated because dwarves normally like to go for the Hobbit summon instead of the Dwarven Riches. Dwarven Riches is giving you the same boost like the industry does for Isengard faction, for example, or Mordor faction. Rohan allies uh, from the Man of the West faction, a 15 power point, definitely more impactful than the Ranger summon, definitely. And always nice when you have like these mobile units on the field to trample down the enemy lines or to even take down the enemy fortress. It is much, much better than the end summon, of course, and also better, in my opinion, than the giant summon. Because it's more... You have more possibilities with that, you know what I'm saying? Giants are always good only when it comes to deal economical damage or destroy enemy buildings. While Rohirrim can also be good to kill enemy units or heroes or buildings, you know? You have much more... but more, Many more options, which makes it much, much greater, in my opinion. Scavenger. Very good. Underrated as hell, for whatever reason. Pick it always from the Goblin Spellbook. Money, money, money. The earlier you pick it the more value you will get in long terms. The, long, the longer the game goes on, the more money you will get from the scavenger, which is kind of insane. Uh, because you always kill units, right? In, at every stage of the game. In, in late game, you will kill even stronger heroes, which makes even more sense to go for a scavenger. And you should never ever run out of money with goblins. You know, Snowbind from the Engma faction, five power points, which is kind of similar to the rebuild from Men of the West or Dwarves, but it's a bit different. Uh, you can also use it, by the way, on the enemy buildings. What it does is, like, the, the selected building is going to be untargetable. You cannot destroy the building anymore, you know? But 
during this time the building is not able to produce any more units for example a, you know just like a scenario you are playing engma against mordor you have Gundabad warriors on the field you go for the attack the second you approach you see a troll cage you are figuring out oh this guy is trying to build a troll what you can do is pick this use it on the troll cage which means troll is not going to be able to enter the battlefield and that's going to give you some time to destroy his slaughterhouses it's also nice of course to save your own buildings or your fortress later on it makes it undistractable during this time while repair is able to heal it up you know we're gonna place it also in this sea next to that spider allies summon 10 power points summon from the goblins goods for harassment for dealing economical damage but i would say you know actually it might be as good as the hobbit summon and we're gonna place it also in the b plus the sun flare from the elven faction uh, which is dealing massive damage to the units of darkness for example mordor engma or, or goblins they will receive lots of damage it will also deal a lot of damage instantly there is no animation time it will hit instantly and you can one shot the entire army of your opponent you know while army of the dead for example you need to chase and stuff like that which makes it, in my opinion a bit better than the army of the dead uh, because it will hit instantly and it will deal burst damage of course army of the dead might be better in some situations against something like uh, heroes but Sunflayer I still would say it's better then we have the Tainted Land which is also very very strong we're gonna place it also in the A++ because it's a 5 power point spell from Goblins or Mordor and there is no answer for that from Isengard or from you know for Isengard can also cover that with his own Tainted Land but he needs to collect 10 power points for that you know what I'm saying and when you play Mordor or Goblins against any faction but Mordor or Goblins like for example you are playing against elves or men of the west or dwarves you can just abuse that use it it's gonna be permanent buff of war chan as long as you are fighting on this land and in some choke points it can be quite nice and efficient to have it and again it's only an investment of five power points guys it's pretty good actually let's put it in the yeah, a plus plus it's not in the s though tom bombadillo <laughs> i like him so much definitely one of the best 10 power point summons in the game if not the best it's so great against anything but buildings, you know? It's good against heroes to trample them down, to knock them down. It's good because it has like a Wizard Plus, the Sonic Song. And every time you use that, you will see your opponent is just trying to disengage because it feels like it's impossible to kill this dude. So it's pretty nice. Undermine, 10 power point from Dwarves. Oof, it deals minimum damage, which can make it quite nice against units like Gundabad Warriors or any Trailmaster unit from Engma, because the Trailmaster units from Engma they have low, like they have like low defense, you know, and it can burst them down. But there are much much better choices like Dwarven Riches, for example, or Hobbit Summon. It can also be good for some sneaky attack, and for that reason, C. The Kraken, the Watcher, 15 power points to kill the entire army, but you need to hit it perfectly. To knock them down to you know deal the massive damage you are looking for it's not as good as the rohan allies in my opinion but it's still very very good it's one of the best 15 power points definitely and we're gonna place it also in the b white summon <laughs> white summon i feel like orc summon is most of the time better so we're gonna go like that felwind definitely s <laughs> this is crazy ability by the way guys i mean how s plus by the way the leader of s it costs you five power. I mean, of course, guys, let's be real. In the S, you have always the buffs like Warch and Rallying Cole, the debuffs, and also Felbin belongs here. Why? Because there is so much Wombo combo potential with that. Like Felbin, long shot from your Dark Rangers. Felbin, Blight. Felbin, Rogash attack, for example. Rogash has splash damage, which means when you Felbin them, they will be gathered together, and then you use one auto attack from Rogash, which means you will be able to hit multiple units at the same time. So Felbin, five power points. One of the best power, five power points in the entire game doesn't fall off any any time in the entire game. By the way, it can be very good early game, even better in mid game, even better in late game, and even better in team games. So it's just such such a good ability. The wolf summon, very good, one of the best twenty five. But in compared to the dragons, it's still falling off. I will place it in the E plus plus because I believe after the dragons, this is the best twenty five. It's also very good against fortress, by the way. This is the best 25 when it comes to take down the enemy fortress. Deals a lot of damage, quite mobile. Doesn't have the area damage like the dragons do or the Balrog does. I like it. I don't know why. We have also the Worm. The Worm is also pretty strong uh, when it comes to destroy enemy buildings. 
It's not as effective against fortresses, but it's very good against production buildings like Orc Pits, Uruk Pits, all of the Kingsmen, or of course, resource buildings like Slaughterhouses and stuff like that. So when it comes to deal economical damage with a 15 power point summon, it's pretty efficient. You can reposition multiple times. It has almost no cooldown. You kill, you reposition, you kill, you reposition and kill again, 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 again. So pretty, pretty efficient. Foresight, uh, yeah, pretty much like Division of Palantia. Doesn't matter anything in Rise of the Witch King because of random revealed. Man of the Hill, definitely better than the Ranger Summon, but still not the best 15 power point, even though I would say it's the it's the leader of the C+, because they have Fire Arrow, unlike, unlike the Rangers. Unteamed Allegiance, uh, yeah, useless. Batman of Dunlan summon from Goblins and also Isengard. Uh, it's definitely a great summon. It's better than the Orc summon. Actually, we can place them also in the B+. The reason why Untamed Allegiance is useless is because it's just useless. <laughs> it's hard to explain. Um, it, give you, it gives you the chance to control a layer, right? And you can even empower some buildings, which doesn't make any sense with factions like Engma, for example, to make the production speed a bit faster. But it's a 10 power point summon. In normal cases, until you have this power point collected, all the creeps from the map are gonna be gone. Or you just steal one creep and your opponent is able to destroy the layer and then it's gonna be gone again. And this is a power point which is gonna be useless in long terms, even if you make a great use of that in the first place, if this makes sense for you guys. But yeah, that's my list. So let's go over it one more time. Felvin, Keepbats, Creeping, Devastation, Summon Dragons from Goblins, Isengard, Eye of Sauron, Flood, Feel the Fires, Industry, Rallying Call, Warchant, Dwarven Riches, and Scavenger. They are in my S list. We have Barrage, Tainted Land from Goblins. Not from Isengard, by the way. There is no from Isengard. I would place from Isengard potentially down. It's From Isengard, the one is a bit better than this one because it's always working. This one is only good in some situations. Isengard, Tainted Land would be somewhere at the C plus or B. This one is from Mordor and Goblins. So Barrage, Tainted Land and Wolves. Uh, the Sheet Wolf. Then we have the Sunflare, Army of the Dead, Rain of Fire, Avalanche, the Mist from Elves in the Tom Bomber deal. In the A+, in the B+, we have the Eagle Summon, Earthquake, Balrog, Blight, Rohan Allies, Cloudbreak, Worm, Giants, Hobbits, Spiders, Wildman of Thailand. The Dragon Strikes, the Summon Citadel from Dwarves, Watcher, Darkness, Freezing Rain, Ends, and also Orc Summon. Then in the bottom, in the, in the C+, we have the Man of Deal Summon, the Arrow Volley, the Barricade from Mordor, the Frozen Land from Engma, the Lone Tower, the White. The C, we have the Rangers, the Elvenwood, the Revealed, the Snowbind, the Undermine, Hill in the D, and in D-, minus we have the Lone Tower, the Vision of Palantir, the Far Side, and also the Untamed Allegiance from the... <laughs> Legendary factions which cost you 10 power points. I mean, that's a joke. Anyways, guys, that's my list. And of course, you are more than welcome to disagree with me. Indeed, I would love to know if and why you disagree with me in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. If you want to see me making a list, me making a tier list for the units, let me know also in the comment section down below. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, keep hitting like a track and stay beyond standards. Peace out.